we have to let go of the old images. And the old images is seen perfectly in the example of the prodigal family. I told you guys about we're changing the name. It's no longer called the prodigal son, right? It's called the prodigal family. Because you have the one son who does claim his inheritance and he runs away and he says, I know what to do in my own strength. I know what I want. And I want this and I'm going to get it with all the money and all the goods that my father has provided for me. Well, that sounds great. How many of us are on board for that? Right? We've all been on board for that. I'm going to go get it. And I'm going to go get it based off my father's own goods, my father's own wealth, my father's own breath, my father's own strength that he's given to me. You see, you've already been living, even in the midst of your sin, based on the goodness of your father. You've already been living in the midst of your sin based on the goodness of your father because the father loves you. So you have the first prodigal son, who has gone out and he finds himself in the pig pen. He finds himself ashamed. And he decides that even the servants at his father's house get treated better than this, so at least I'll go and I'll be a servant. So this is the first prodigal. This is the first false image that we have of the father. And it's this. Because we have sinned, all we deserve is less than what God has for us. Less than what the Father has for us. So that's your first trap that we get caught in. I've messed up. I've made a mistake. So I'm only able to get less than what the Father really has for me now. Okay? Now we know that the Son comes home and the Father doesn't even allow that Son to speak those lies into his house. The father runs out to meet him. The father calls out. The father says to his actual servants, hey, bring the goods out here. Before he even gets into my house, bring the goods out and clothe him and put a ring on him and prepare the food for him and let's have a party. That's what God does for you, the good father. While you're still convincing yourself, I'll never be, I'll never be, I'll never be. I've messed up. It'll never be. It'll never be. Go ahead. Tell me how many times. It'll never be. It'll never. You say it over and 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 over. You sound like an auction drug dealer, high on drugs, and God still says to you, "I'm coming out. I'm coming after you. I'm coming for you." Your heart is turned back to the house and I'm coming out. And my actual servants, the angels and the beings of heaven and the fullness of the kingdom is preparing itself to lavishly be placed upon you. Because this is the prodigal father. This is the lavish father who says, you were just in a pig pen and I don't even know if you've taken a shower yet, but here comes the best robe. Here comes my ring. So then you have the second son. And the second son is stuck in the field. But what does it say about the second son in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15? It talks about him being in the field. And what has he been doing the whole time? Fulfilling the commands of the father. He's been fulfilling the commands of the father the whole time. But he's angry and he's upset because he has totally spent all of his energy all of his identity to fulfill commands. And he's never caught the revelation that everything that the Father has is his. This is the second position. This is the second false image that we have of the Father. That the Father desires for us to fulfill commands in the work field without ever knowing that everything he has is ours. We get stuck in one of those two things. Usually both of them, somehow at the same time. It doesn't even make sense. Call us crazy. But the good father comes out to him too. And the good father says to him, I beg you, I plead with you, come into the house. Celebrate the movement from death to life of your brother. Celebrate the movement from death to life 
Celebrate the movement from death to life. This is what the second son doesn't have. The first son at least has a hope that he can return to some degree of a status. But the second son doesn't have any degree of a hope that his life will get better. Because he is fulfilling all the commands and he still doesn't have what he thinks he should have because he's fulfilled all the commands. And the father says, come into the house. Come into the house. Learn how to celebrate resurrection life. Learn how to celebrate new life. Don't you know that all that I have is yours? 